Hello my friends and welcome back to our continued playing let's play Ace Attorney Dual Destinies for the PS5. My name is The Flightless Bird, this is your story based gaming channel, and today... Well, just when you think you got all the answers, someone's got to change the questions. What the heck is going on with this case? Let's find out together, shall we? I hope you're all having a wonderful, fantastic day today. You won't believe this, but I used a body double. That was the real me at the mock trial. That means I didn't almost lose. My body double almost did. I slipped out stealthily while my double took care of the trial. I had to run at the campus. In short, I'm the killer. Juniper's innocent. Like, what the heck? Like, like, I don't understand why you just suddenly confess all of a sudden after recanting your confession. It's, what's going on? Hmm, I have a question that's hoping the face of prosecution might help me answer. Is it just me or does the witness's testimony make no sense at all? No, 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 I'm with you on that one. Like, what the heck is going on? No, it's not just you, your honor. All I got from the saint to that was a headache. Yeah, that was just plain weird. Especially the whole thing about a body double. Well, I'm relieved it's not just me in the uh, prosecution. Your bombness. Summon an ambulance this instant. The witness is stark, raving mad. Hmm, yes, I think that would be for the best. <laughs> well, now then, let's pretend that never happened and move on. Just like when the all that just happened, we're just gonna move on. <laughs> all right, uh, that got me, Judge. <sighs> you people don't believe me. It's not a matter of not believing you, it's more along the lines of questioning your sanity. <laughs> Yeah, that funny farm just called. They want your genius back. Shut your pie holes. The intellect of a genius transcends even logic. Besides, don't you guys have that weird device for testimony like this? Objection! Which is not a weird device, and I don't waste them on ridiculous testimonies. Easy there, tiger. Think of it this way. Yeah, we don't want a verdict to be passed just yet. So how about we give Widget a try? Well, this is against my better judgment, but I'd like to conduct a short therapy session. Hmm, your better judgment? Well, I'm a judge, and it's far beyond mine. Yet I find it hard to say no. Prosecutor Blackwell, I trust you have uh, no objections. Um, uh, Prosecutor Blackwell. <laughs> this will never get old to me. The owl, uh, not the owl, the bird. How did I say owl? The bird landing on the judge's head will never, ever get old. This, that will make me smile every single time I see it. Especially with the judge looking straight up at the bird. And the bird just is like, yeah, I'm here. What are you going to do about it? It's not even paying the judge any attention. He's just like, yep, I own your head. That's right. Uh, Blackwell? Oscar said rubbish, we'll be out in a stroll, and then left with Detective Fulbright. So he left the bird in charge? How does he get away with stuff like that? <laughs> Look at the bird. Well then, all that took that is meaning he has no explicit objections. So if you go poop on my head, I'm gonna be very upset. Alright, Miss Sykes, you may proceed with your therapy session. I've seen my share of crazy trials, but this one takes the cake. Oh god, the worst, the, the worst thing. And I don't mean to say this is a bad mechanic, I'm just saying this is the thing I'm worst at. Like, I can do chess logic, okay? I can't do this very well. Whoa. What the heck is this? You want all Joe Henry on me? Is he gonna start singing too? 
You won't believe this, but I used a body double. Oh, oh, oh. So we can't. Oh, this, this is. That wasn't the real me at the mock trial. That means I didn't almost lose. My body double did. I slipped out stealthily while my body double took care of the trial. I had to run into campus. In short, I'm the killer. Juniper's innocent. So, we can... See, the problem is I never know what to throw. Looks almost like a wizard in that picture. Okay, let me go all the way back. We can probe the stand in. That seems like the most likely thing to do. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Look, look back there. What's causing happiness? I didn't even see that. Okay, so I need to click on what's causing happiness. Thank you, game, for telling me that. Hmm. Fill me at the mark trial. Wait, what's causing happiness? Juniper Woods is calling causing happiness. Got it. Miss O'Connor. Mr. O'Connor. Yesterday you said that you didn't really care about Miss Woods anymore. I mean that just seemed natural to me. Once I knew that that there was a question, finding the answer was not so hard. I already told Juniper, so I might as well tell you, I don't really care about you anymore. Yeah, well, Juniper reported my secret to Professor Court, the little snitch. His secret? Oh, the bribe. She wanted nothing to do with me because I had disappointed her. That's why I don't care about her anymore. I was never trying to protect her. My confession was always about one thing, and one thing only, the truth. Objection! Mr. O'Connor, you feel great happiness of the fact that you might help set Miss Woods free. So much so that it overshadowed all of your other emotions. What are you? I can hear it clearly now, Mr. O'Connor. The discord that you've been trying to suppress. I can hear it clearly now, the rain is gone. People don't normally feel like you do when you are confessed. So Hugh really was trying to protect Juniper? Yes, I'm sure of it. Hugh's feelings for her are the real deal. Okay, we know that's not trustworthy anymore, right? Because, like, I was like, the last trial, or the trial before, went from 90 to 60 to 0. So, we can't trust that as a guide on how many of these we have to do. But that means his confession is... Finally figure out the obvious, have we? Who is this? Is this Means? Is it, uh, Blackwell? Oh, Blackwell's back. Okay. I'm still expecting something to happen with Means. Like, they, they can't put a guy in this case where the end justifies the means, and where the case is about the end justifying the means, without him having to be some sort of important person to the things happening around us. Uh, so I'm just waiting for him to jump in and be like, OBJECTION! And then, then he goes off on something. But what's gonna lead to that something? I have no idea. Why, well, uh, Prosecutor Blackwell, you're back! The confession was not but lies, save for the part about being in the mock trial. I love how he takes care of his bird. <laughs> See the bird's eyes grow there? That was great. Can we all agree now that the killer is one in charge of the audio, i.e. the accused? Ka, why couldn't you have taken that longer stroll? <laughs> no, no, you haven't unraveled the genius of my body double trick yet. You can't be serious. Do you really expect us to believe you had a body double? Yes, yes I do. But if you think I didn't, then prove it. Heh. <laughs> Either we quit here and uh, Juniper is found guilty, or we play along with Hugh's uh, delusion. Let's go with the least worst choice. But first, let me update his testimony. Oh god, now we have to do these face things. The, uh... What's the unexpected emotion? Yeah, the, the, the other one was so much easier. Okay. So why is he shocked that, they used, that he used a body to... But let me go back to that one. Okay. 
my body double did. I still thought Sethly while my double took care of the trial. I had the run of the campus. In short, I'm the killer. Then why is he sad? Why are you sad that she's innocent? Okay, there's two things that I'm confused about. This one's probably the most confusing one. Why would he be sad that she's innocent? Or fearful that she's innocent? Right? It could be sad or fearful. Mr. Okana, this- Ah, oh, gosh darn it, that's not it. You don't know what you're talking about. I take joy my intellect, feel anger toward your superficiality. Suffer sadness at the world's ephemerality and wonder at the universe's mysteries. Ugh, I don't even know what he said. I should have bought my dictionary to court. Wait, let me tell that one again. Heh, I also suffer sadness at the futility of your efforts, but if you must. Okay, l let's go back to this one. Maybe he's afraid because he's a killer. That does make sense. That does make sense that he'd be afraid if he's a killer. The cool thing is I'm not losing any health by doing this, so I can try to figure this out. I didn't almost lose, my body double did. So he's super happy that she's innocent. I don't think this is it. Um, I'm gonna... I think this one's probably more true. He's happy that he's a killer. Okay, let's go back to the one. I swear, I'm so bad at this. I am so bad at these, um... These things. And I don't think they're a bad mechanic. I just think I'm bad at them. Here, there's no emotion at all, but there's happiness here, and there's shock here. Why is there shock here? Because he wouldn't be shocked to use a body double. We would be shocked. Oh, that's not it either. Think of these. I'm sorry, my friends. I am so sorry. Um, okay, there's no motion at all. Should I be happy that you didn't lose. That was it. Okay. Uh, again, that that's a really hard thing about those is when you have to click on one that isn't flashing. It's easier to click on the ones that are flashing because you know that there's something going on. Hmm. I did it almost lose. You say very odd. You exhibited happiness the entire time, accepting the statement. Yeah, that's part of the reason why I was queued in there. Arg, you don't know what to give up. Wait, now that I think about it. No, don't. Stop making stuff up. <laughs> when I left the lecture hall, it was during Professor Mead's pre-trial speech. That's when I moved the body. I then slipped back in. Just before the verdict. So you're saying you were there at the moment that Bat Double was about to lose? Yes, I was. Naturally, I wasn't happy when I saw that. In any case, I was at the far end of the lecture hall, behind the screen. I figured no one would see me if I came and went through the doors there. Objection! Sykes, to know. How much longer will you indulge him in this charade? While it's true that none in the audience might see him go through either of those doors. The faculty seats on the balconies are a different story and have a splendid view. Heh, <laughs> I thought you could do better than that. The lawyer's bench is on the right side when facing the front of the hall. I used the door on the right side near the lawyer's bench. That means my movements were only visible to someone in the left balcony seat. But that seat was empty at the time, which is only natural, 
because that was court seat. After all, it belonged to Professor Court, and as we all know, she was already dead by then. <sighs> all the dots. That can't be right. An empty balcony seat on the left side contradicts this piece of evidence. Okay, um... Uh, the left side is Professor Means' seat, not Professor Court's. I have no idea where this contradiction is going, but I don't have any other moves at this point. Guess I'll just follow it and see where this takes me. You said that that balcony seat was empty. What was it really? Uh, I saw it with my own eyes. It was definitely empty. But what about this diagram? Uh, according to this, Professor Meads was supposed to be seated in the left balcony seat. But if you left the lecture hall during the pre tile speech, he would have been standing there at his seat addressing the students and faculty. Ugh, no, this can't be right! Huh. You do no one any favors by exposing the falsities of his confession. I told plenty of lies so far, but this part is true, I tell you. There was nobody in the left back of his seat. You got to believe me. Hmm, it doesn't seem like he's lying this time. Okay, Mr. O'Connor, let's have you testify again, but this time don't spare any details. Hey, you got it. I'll repeat it as many times as you'd like. I mean, my ingenious escape act warrants repeating, considering I'm the real killer. All I really care about is whether or that seat was empty or not. Ooh. The second floor was deserted. He's shocked. Why would he be shocked? Because he knows that's Professor Quartz. Why would he be shocked? Don't get it. Why would he be shocked by that? Like, why? Uh, by the way, I can't skip this. But why would he be shocked if that was Professor's Court and he knew Professor Court died? Why would you believe me? It's true, I tell you. Back door. Then all I had to do was go through the empty audio control. Why are you afraid of that? Okay, okay, okay. Why are you afraid or sad about this? I detect a powerful sentence of fear right after you said this part. It's as if you said something you shouldn't have. What's wrong with you? You shouldn't reveal a person's inner feelings for all to see. Mr. O'Connor, it's you who's revealing your inner emotions by the way you speak. Plus, I have a good idea about why you're feeling sad. Urgh, you're a horrible person. Can't you just leave me be? You said that you went through the empty audio control room, but that's not true, is it? There was someone who returned from there once Professor Meads finished his speech. Juniper Woods? And that someone that was in the control room was... Juniper? Take that! I knew you realized there was a problem with your statement as you were saying it. That's why you felt so uneasy. If the audio control room really was empty, that would mean Miss Woods was roaming around the campus. Urgh. Mr. O'Connor, if you really want to protect Miss Woods, just tell the truth. If you believe in her, revealing the truth is the same as protecting her. Junipers. Innocent. That's the truth. But in this dark age of the law, the truth can be easily twisted to serve anyone's needs. When the end justifies the means, your only choice is to fight back with lies. Whose heart won't hold out under this battle between truth and lies? Is there something I could do to make him return and recant his false testimony? <laughs> I fear nothing now that I have lost everything. 
Go ahead, Prosecutor Black Quill. Cut me down if you wish. Hmm. I thought you'd never ask. With you gone, we may swiftly proceed to a verdict. Uh oh, he's loose. Uh, he broke out of his shackles again! You know, we really need to do something about his shackles. Like, maybe, like, use two or three of them. Just, just tie up his whole body or something. I don't want to be the poor county down at the detention center. Hugh O'Connor. In deference to your valor, I will limit your suffering with one clean blow. Hold it! Could you wait just one moment before you cut him down? You are not an executioner. Silence! Do not come between a samurai. Oh my god, that's fast. I've never learned about this in last What did he say? A samurai and his foe. Careful, prosecutor. Remember that shocking experience you had last time. Where is Fulbright? Huh. Very well, golden boy may live. For now. Enough already, Mr. O'Connor. Miss Woods would never want to protect her this way. She values the friendship between the three of you more than anything. That's where you're wrong. She doesn't feel anything for me now. Heh. <laughs> but what does it matter anymore? I might as well tell you everything. This is, no doubt, news to you. But I am not and never was a genius. Sorry, but I already knew. Ooh. <laughs> me too. Oh man, burn. And don't forget me. In all fairness, it's pretty obvious you dimwit. I thought it was a genius at first, but... The stuff he said was crazy. Arg. No need to rub it in. Just shut up and listen. It all started several days ago. I accidentally learned that my parents have been paying good money for my grades. But, but that's, uh, that's bribery! So, the bribery was a Hugh's idea? All of my perfect scores were the product of cool, hard cash, not genius. Even worse, when I confronted my parents about it over the phone. Juniper overheard me. Mm, oh my, 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 what a terrible Mr. Disney this is. I've been living a lie. I don't know what else there is to say. I'm no genius. I'm completely worthless. A perfect zero. Hmm. Q. Even so, I still wanted to make it up to Juniper for disappointing her like that. That's why I want to clear her name by pinning the blame on me. I mean, she probably hates me now, so it'd be a relief for her to see me locked away. If you were trying to help her, then why did you testify against her? You were the ones who told me to tell the truth yesterday. So I thought if I did, it would help her. He wasn't trying to provoke us. It looks like we seriously misunderstood him in more ways than one. At the detention center yesterday, Junie was in tears when she opened up to me. But the truth is, the friendship between the three of them is still rock solid. If there was something that could help me prove that to Hugh, Hey, we even have proof of our friendship. Yeah! As long as the friendship lasts, men will begin them around! I know. What about that proof of friendship they mentioned? Hmm. I wonder where or what it is. I didn't buy it. What is this? Chokers? It's handmade. 
And there's only one like it in the world. Oh, check out this music. Maybe it's... No, that's definitely it. That band around his neck. Mr. O'Connor. That band around your neck. That's your proof of friendship, isn't it? Ugh. Proof of uh, friendship? Is anything like a proof of purchase barcode? You know, I saw this anime where they put their hands out and they drew like a smiley face and they helped this young kid defeat this like giant uh, blue eyed uh, whatever dragon. Okay, I think it was a blue eyed dragon. I remember seeing like this, uh, this uh, Korean version I bought when I was a kid but they called it a green eyed dragon. I swear, buying that green version was just so full of errors. I also bought one of you, Hawk Show, and they called Kie, Kurama, and Kurama Hie, and it was so confusing because they didn't, they, they kept calling the wrong person the wrong name. And I swear, never ever ever buy anime like that. Make sure it comes from the source. Make sure it's probably translated. Don't buy that $20 cheap stuff. It just doesn't work. Yeah, what was I talking about? All right, all right, the, the proof of purchase, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, is it like that? In court, evidence is everything. That's why we three friends created friendship bands. It's the evidence that proves the friendship. Hmm, oh, oh, how very interesting. And cheek. When you get one of those on Amazon. If they have doubts about their friendship, they can look to the proof they have on hand. That's why Mr. O'Connor's hand always goes to his neck when he is pressured. Oh! It proves he saw his feelings of friendship towards the other two. It doesn't matter if I wear it for those two. Oh yeah, you're right. He is putting his hand to his neck. Objection! I didn't realize that. But they feel the same way too. I know they were at the friendship bands else somewhere. Judy and Robin both must feel the same as you. I just know it. Everything he has said leads me to believe that. In fact, he may have also just told me that the others were the proof of friendship. Uh, whether easy to touch, right. All we have to do is think back to the testimonies. Freddy, oh god, I wasn't even paying attention to this. Uh, so his arm. Mr. Min holds her arm when pressured. Her wrist. And Miss Woods holds her wrist. I didn't even realize that's what they were doing. I know Miss Woods very well. She would never abandon her friendship with you over something like this. And taking the blame for her will only succeed in making her terribly sad. Arg. 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 I have no idea what that is. I just know it's like really late at night and I don't want to scream because I haven't even. What's this? Oh. Robin. Those bands of friendship that you made, just for the three of us. You may have forgotten about them, but not me. Aww. You. Hmm? Ah. <laughs> hey, you. <laughs> <laughs> to think I should have known better than to doubt my best friends <laughs> Aww. Aww. I didn't kill anyone and I didn't have a body double I didn't Move the body. I didn't even see it. And it may look like I'm speed reading. Zen in the Arch of Master in the Bar exam. I haven't read a single word. Hmm, well, uh, you could have fooled me, big fraud. Fact, I think you did. Phew. So, Miss Sykes, can I place my trust in you? Absolutely. I'm going to save Junie. So yes, you can place your test on me. Well, then I might have seen the witness is recanting his confession. Again. 
Yes. Was this entire, like, trial a waste of time? I don't mean him. I don't mean the trial. I mean his testimony a waste of time. Sort of like, uh, what was that one case uh, with Armstrong? And he got the guy in his bird and he kept throwing stuff and the birds kept attacking. Like that entire section of that case was just a giant waste of time and just ridiculous. Not ridiculous in a good Ace Attorney way, ridiculous in a bad Ace Attorney way. I, I don't think it's like that. I, I do think this testimony has value. But, I mean, we're kind of back at square one, in a way. Y yeah, he feels better about himself, but we're still back at square one. Huh. Most roundabout trial. I much prefer the turnabout variety myself. Oh, I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Because all the cases are Carl turnabouts. Now, we are back to the fact that there was but one suspect who lacked an alibi. Which is, in the end... The truth you've been seeking this entire time. So we're back to square one. Uh, now I'm exhausted and depressed. It probably doesn't matter at this point. But I might as well update the mid matrix. Oh, look at that picture. What's he pointing at, though? Huh? Does this mean... Further resistance is futile. The time for a verdict is nigh. Objection! Please wait. What sort of devilry are you up to now? What if our client wasn't the only one without an alibi? The trial would continue, right? Hmm, well, yes, I suppose it would. But after such a thorough investigation, does such a person really exist? One does. Yes, we found someone. It may have seemed like a major roundabout. Wait a second, did I and did I guess this at the beginning of the trial? Is it possible? Is it possible that I guessed this early on? Because look, if Professor Means was there, he would have seen. Well, no, I mean that's not important. What's the point is that Hugh said, Professor, Hugh, Hugh said that the left faculty seat was empty. That's what I meant to say. If the left faculty seat was empty, that means Professor Means does not have an alibi for this part of the trial. Because he wasn't there. If we can believe anything that Hugh says, of course. But Mr. O'Connor's testimony has cracked the case. But then again, when I said that Means could be a possible suspect, I was constantly rebutted with, well, why would he do... Why would... Well, no, because I said Professor Means did want to take the case. And he wanted to take the case to perfectly sink the case. Because if he takes a case and he gets Junie guilty, then that means all suspicion is off him. So he was basically selling his student up the river. That's a cool, vindictive bastard, if true. Well, I mean, the ends justify the means, right? I mean, the ends, he goes free. The means, uh, you gotta sacrifice a kid. I mean, she's, what, 18? I've been corrected about that. She's not a kid, but still, she's 18. What a jerk. There's no more noise. He was telling you the truth now. During the mock trial, the faculty seat opposite him really was empty. Which now means there is one person unaccounted for. Besides Junie, the only other person without an alibi during the mock trial is... Uh, professor has that on me! The back of it was empty. That much is true, isn't it, Mr. O'Connor? That's right. How many more times do I have to say it? So basically, Professor Means where wasn't where he was supposed to be during the mock trial. Silence. 
need, I remind you. Every last soul in the lecture hall heard him deliver his speech. Objection. I know, and that's not in dispute here. Now, let me explain how a speech can be given from an empty seat. It was... Uh, given by a hiney, given later, or pre-recorded. Yeah, absolutely. What if this speech was pre-recorded? That's the only way the speech could have been delivered from an empty balcony seat. Why'd you say objection? Wait, are you accusing Professor Means? That's insane! I mean, he's the one who gave me the tape recorder. A lie, exactly! Oh, take this to the place, he said, and tell them that you found it! <laughs> what? Really? Wait a second. Mr. O'Connor, did you say that Professor Means gave that funny recording to you? Boney! Fence will refrain from hurling unsubstantiated allegations. Well, I said he gave it to me. But what do you mean, it's phony? It's phony? Wow, who could have seen this development? Tape recorder updated in the court record. Identified as fake, prof as fake Professor Means used you to pass it to the police. This voice shouting, you're a gunner, is a recording on the tape. Was dubbed onto it using a line our client said in the mock trial video. Hmm, why is this? This is an extremely crucial piece of evidence. Why haven't you given this to you sooner? <laughs> Professor Means gave Hugh the funny tape. If that's really true, the Professor Means has guilt written out of him. Your Honor, the defense moves to call Professor Erasato Mitlins to the stand. Silence. I like totally butchered his name, but it's fine. Just go with it. Ha! Huh. The seat was never empty. It was but an oversight by a dullard of a witness. An inmate who was formerly a surgeon once told me something. He said it's often all too easy to overlook critical symptoms. Objection. Well, we're not going to overlook this oversight. If the speech was pre-recorded, the basis for suspecting our client would be shattered. Let's check with Professor Means and see whether the empty seat was a witness oversight. A verdict without first looking into that would be inconceivable. I love that word. Well, that's it, both of you. Now, here's my opinion on the matter. While a surgeon overlooking critical symptoms is a problem, a witness oversight too must not be overlooked. Thus, as to matter of whether Professor Means was or was not in his faculty seat, I believe we must ask the professor to see you. Right, oh, Judge. I agree. Professor Means should be here in the gallery today. Huh. Do as you please. Okay, well, I was figuring the professor would show up sometime, but he did not show up to say objection. We are calling him to the stand. Will you please state your name and occupation for the big? Uh, certainly, I am Aristotle Mags. When I teach a lie, of course, at Demon's Legal Academy, and let me add that while I welcome any opportunity to assist with the trial, I don't care for this undue suspicion. Don't worry, Professor. We're just interested in the mock trial video right now. We just need to take another look at that speech that you gave. Can we count on your collaboration in this? Well, very well. That's all that you're interested in. Now please proceed, Miss Sykes. We need to find some sort of evidence that shows the speech was pre-recorded. Mm, all right. Believe that you're ready. Well, let's rock and roll the video. Uh, good afternoon. I would like to start by thanking you for coming here today. Well, the mock trial, the grand jewel event of the school festival, will begin shortly. When I was a student, I too could hardly wait for this day to come. Oh, no. I had forgotten how long and boring his speech was. <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> I even watch as long as sleep. Huh. Wake me up once this is over. Hey, no fair. In those scores and 70,000 years ago, the spirits of our youth have a powerful and profound effect on our adults. Yada yada yada, you there, wake up and pay attention. Huh? Eek! I'm awake, I'm awake. Is it that right, Your Honor? <laughs> What's going on here? Is it lunchtime yet? <laughs> this is hilarious. I love this. Once again, the pure white lady justice will be watching over all of you today. Pay attention, you may make a difference one day. And now. Let the mock trial begin! Well, that is about it. One of my better speeches, if I do say so myself. I even saw some mustards with tears in their eyes. He's obviously not familiar with the phrase bored in tears. <laughs> Listen, Sykes Dano. If you are subjugated me to this epic study and tedium without purpose, I will kill you. Taka will feast on your tongue after I've cut it out. Yeesh! Eek! But you were asleep the whole time. <laughs> well, Miss Sykes, did you notice anything strange about that speech? Could I please hear the last part again? Oh, dear lord. Once again, our pure white lady justice will be watching over all of you today. There, I finally found out what we needed. Professor Means, I have only one question about your speech. Why did he say white when the statue is gold? Why does the lab put me here? Just contradict with this. The professor said the pure white lady justice would be watching over them. But the lady justice video isn't even close to being white. It's as gold as can be. Oh, it's white here. Professor Gore had remade it into a completely different look statue the day before the trial. But it was found broken backstage and it was white. So why was it found broken as white when it's supposed to be yellow? The day before the mock trial. It's weird how that's done. Ah! I'm not sure I can make my jewel around to taste it all the taste. I did say it was made of gold, your honor. Now it's true that this statue is pure white. But it broke before the mock trial began. The one you see here is its replacement. Oh well, that's a shame on every count. Ironically, this golden statue sticks out like a sore thumb compared to the white one. Meaning the professor couldn't have made a mistake in its color if he'd had been present. Interesting. So weird how it shows up white in the evidence, though. Well, it seems that I have caused some confusion. It was really an oversight on my part. Objection. The statue was in the middle of the room. How could you not know what it looked like? Well, I was in the balcony seat. And furthermore, the statue it had previously been white. Hmm, I'm afraid this is sufficient evidence of the speech being pre recorded. We had our answer long ago. The accused was the only one to leave the lecture hall. No, wait. There's got to be something that could prove that the speech was pre recorded. Uh, according to the mock trial video. Way too long, way too boring. The the speech started here. And uh it ended here. Like some that's actually only a ten and a half minute speech. Is that really that long? Well, when you talk like this, even a one minute speech could sound pretty dry and boring. 
pretty sure everyone on YouTube has fallen asleep, but this is just my plan. Because hopefully they have the play decks button automatic and they'll just keep cycling through the Fightless Birds videos. Oh, it all comes together. Anyway, <laughs> that was a little bit of this. Why now anyone wants to be tortured again? It was only a little over 10 minutes. It felt like it went on forever. How did you figure out how long it was? Uh, easy. It's like a timestamp on the top right. Yeah. All you had to do is, you know, subtract the time the speech started from the time it ended. The speech goes on from the 10 minute mark to 2035. Wait a second. I could swear I've seen the same interval of time. Listen. Oh. <laughs> I never saw that. I mean, I saw the time interval, but I, oh my gosh. I could swear I've seen the same interval of time listed among the evidence. Maybe there's a way for me to use the speech time to show that it was pre-recorded. Uh, what is it? This. No? Yes? Yes? Um, it doesn't show it. Here. 1035. Okay. Yeah, this is what you have to use. I would like the court to take a look at this. Well, and this is... The voice with analysis that puts the voice on the voice tip recorder belongs to our client. Well, yes, but didn't we just establish that the voice on the tip recorder was a fabrication? We did. But what I'd like to focus on is the noise that is also there. Noise? Yes, the defense believes it resulted when the tape's previous recording was erased. Huh. And what do you hope to prove by that? The length of the noise is what's important. It's 10 minutes and 35 seconds in all. And what did the timestamps read at the moment Professor Means began the speech? Hmm, that would be exactly uh, 10. Right, 10 o'clock, 10 minutes, whatever, they, whatever that 10 thing is. Now, let's fast forward this long-winded exercise and boredom to the end. Okay, stop. The video timestamp now reads... Oh, I, I just I just missed that. Now reads 2035. Based on this, we know the time it took for the speech alone. Right, if you subtract the uh, 10 minutes, you get 10.35. Wait, is it good? 10 minutes? 35 seconds? Why, that's the exact amount of time? Uh, could swear that's a combination to my lunch books. Right, 10 minutes and 35 seconds, the same as the noise on the tape recording. I assume you all understand what this means. Professor Means' pre-record speech has had been where the noise is now. Silence. You seem rather confident, considering this is a mere happenstance match of numbers. Objection. But is it really just numbers? The lab is continuing their study of the tape. So far, they found no signs of overdubbing. But it's going to take a bit longer to recover the audio that was advised. The police are analyzing the noise as we speak. It won't be long until we know what was originally in there. Now I'm sure of it. The professor was trying to create an alibi with the recording. By pinning the crime on Juni. Well, he's not gonna get away with it. Not on my watch. Uh, Miss Sykes! I believe you are well aware of my methodology. Even if Juniper were the perpetrator, I would vigorously defend her as per my word. And to that purpose, I offered to be a lawyer. And also, and alas, look at what's happened. All I say to the obvious deductions derived from my evidence and testimony. Truth be told, I had no intention of testifying. I have been keeping quiet for Juniper's sake. But now that you cast this blame upon me, 
Well, I have no choice but to reveal the truth. Uh oh, this doesn't sound good. Well, I will now reveal the truth behind why I had to pre record my speech before the mock trial. I, Professor Means, always say what I mean and mean what I say by all means. <laughs> Professor Means' testimony. This is where I'm going to stop for today, though. Uh, much love to you all. It is past midnight. And uh, tomorrow is going to be a very interesting day here. So I need to make sure that I wrap this up and go to bed. I love you all so very much and hope you have a wonderful, fantastic, amazing, awesome day. Thank you for everything. I love you all so much. And I I'm just so blessed to have you all. The, the, this community, the number one YouTube community on all YouTube, you are all. Amazing, absolutely amazing. And you're brilliant and you're incredible and you're just so, so good. Uh, until next time, dear friends, so long and take care. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment on what you saw and what you'd like to see next. I always love to hear your thoughts. But before we go, please remember that you matter and you are brilliant and you are loved and you should always be true to yourself. Never let the world tell you any different. Much love to you from your friendly, feathered, flightless bird.